Hi everyone, this is Ray once again, and today I want to talk about Pure Solar on the SIG Genesis. And uh, if you haven't heard of this game before, what it is, is it's a brand new RPG on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. And it was developed by Watermelon, which is uh, made up of a group of Mega Drive fans that wanted to create a quality RPG for the 20th anniversary of the Mega Drive, which obviously happened quite a while ago now. So the game doesn't seem like anything too special at first. Uh, it's, it stars a group of teenagers, which of course is very common for the genre. And uh, one of their fathers has all of a sudden fallen ill with a mysterious illness and they have to venture out to some woods to look for a herb to uh, cure it. And uh, the story itself isn't really that great to be honest. Uh, it, it's one of those games where almost nothing happens throughout the game story-wise until the very ending, but the ending is pretty good so I'd say that's what makes this game worth it. The ending is very different than what you'd expect and it's very tragic. So the battle system uses what's known as Gather and what that is is once per turn each party member can uh, charge one point of magic energy up to five and uh, what it's used to do is charge up some of the more powerful magic attacks such as ones that will damage all of your enemies. But Gather also is used to power up your other attacks, such as your physical attacks and your uh, standard magic attacks. And uh, later in the game you're going to have to be focusing a lot on your Gather. I should also mention that every time you're attacked by an enemy, your Gather will decrease by one. Unless of course you've got a, an item that gives you a preset amount of Gather at the beginning of the battle. One of my biggest gripes with the game is the status effect, uh, poison. And it's not your regular poison where you just take damage every turn. What it is, is on top of taking damage, you also have your attack power and defense power decrease, which is very fucking annoying as it is, but on top of that, what happens is every once in a while, your character will not be able to respond to your commands. So if you ever get poisoned, you're pretty much fucked and it's better to just run than stay in the fight. That's that's one positive though. After the battle, the poison status effect is gone, so you don't have to worry about that. I found the puzzle solving in this game to be a little bit repetitive. Uh, most of it seemed to be hitting switches. Like you'd hit a switch somewhere, a platform would float around, come near you, you'd bore that platform, and it would take you to another set of switches and so on. But to the developer's credit, they were a little bit sneaky sometimes, like there's one point where you hit one of the switches and it will uh, hide behind the foreground. I guess there was one uh, puzzle that I really enjoyed in the game, and although the solution was very simple, I just kind of liked it. What it was is there's this one area, uh, it's a mountain, and whichever exit you take, just come back to the same point. And apparently, the story behind it is that there's a woman that set it up for a cheating husband to get lost into and I'm not going to spoil the solution so once you get there you'll just know what I'm talking about but I think you'll enjoy it too. Like many classic RPGs this game has its uh, share of mini games and the one I liked personally was a ripoff of Bomberman the only real difference is he used exploding frogs rather than bombs. This game comes on a 64 meg cartridge, and if you want a comparison, I think the largest N64 game ever produced came on a 64 meg cartridge. And I believe those were Resident Evil 2 and Conker's Path 30. Anyway, if it was big for a Nintendo 64, you know it's a big for a Sega Genesis as well. And uh, what they really used most of the space for, as far as I can tell, is the uh, huge full screen illustrations. And although the artwork a little fanish. It looks very good. Uh, they they use it in a similar way to Lunar, I'd say. Like Lunar used full motion video to introduce many of the 
uh, characters that you come across, and I thought that worked really well because it gives you a better look at what the character would look like in higher detail. And they kind of did the same thing for Pure Solar. So probably one of my favorite parts about the game was the music. And although it's not really anything too special, there are some really, really good tracks. Uh, my personal favorite was the track for uh, the large city that I've forgotten the name of. I'm not very good at remembering things. Uh, God damn it, what was it? Oh right, Verhanza. Verhanza was the name of the big city. Uh, anyway, that was my favorite track in the game. It had a really nice classic uh, bassy Genesis tone to it. And Oh, another really cool thing about this game is you can actually hook up your Sega CD and uh, unfortunately I have the reprint edition but the original release of the game had a CD that you could pop into your Sega CD and listen to an enhanced soundtrack while playing the game and it's the only Sega Genesis game in existence to do that. Uh, of course if you're like me and you ended up with the reprint edition uh, Watermelon uploaded an ISO of the CD to their website that you can burn and play on your Sega CD without any modding whatsoever. Uh, I played through the entire game with the original cartridge sound and I I really liked it. I've heard some of the CD stuff and I have to say I actually prefer the uh, original cartridge sound, surprisingly. Anyway, I just wanted to give you my quick thoughts on Pure Solar. I know it wasn't the most detailed review, but if you're a Sega Genesis fan, you definitely need to get this. It's not only because it's a 2010 Sega Genesis release, but it's also a very solid RPG. And I know I probably sounded like I had a lot of gripes with it, but that's because it does have a lot of flaws. But in the end, it's still a very worthy game. Uh, and I'd say, although it's very uneventful story-wise until the very end, the ending definitely makes up for it. So, if you're at all interested in this game from what I said, definitely pick it up.